Welcome back to Thrani, I'm Joe B. Today we'll be talking about the joint mechanics that occurs at the hip, knee, and ankle during gait cycle. Let's dive in. Gait cycle is the pattern of movements that occur while walking. It starts when the heel of one foot contacts the ground and ends when that same heel contacts the ground again. It has two faces. The stance face where the foot is in contact with the ground and the swing face where the foot is in the air. Let's go over the stance face hip, knee, and ankle joint range of motions first. Your stance face has five sub-faces. The first one is the initial contact, also known as the heel strike, in which the heel first touches the ground. If you take a snapshot of this face, there is a femoral head posterior glide to cause hip flexion. The tibial femoral and patellofemoral joint is in neutral as well as the talocural joint. After the initial contact, we proceed to the loading response, also known as foot flat which starts when the whole foot contacts the ground and ends when the opposite foot comes off the ground. Here, there is still a femoral head posterior glide for hip flexion. There is also a tibial posterior glide and patellar inferior glide for knee flexion. At the ankle, there is talocural joint anterior glide for ankle plantar flexion. After the loading response, there is mid stance, which starts when the opposite toe comes off the ground and ends when the heel comes off the ground of the lead leg. The hip joint here is in neutral. There is also a tibial anterior glide and patellar superior glide as the knee is in semi-extended position and because the body is moving forward the talocural joint glides posteriorly to allow anterior tibial rotation. After the mid stance comes the terminal stance. It starts when the heel rises off the floor and ends when the opposite heel strikes the ground. The femoral head here glides anteriorly to allow hip 15 degrees of hyperextension. The tibial femoral and patellofemoral joints are neutral while the talocural joint is still on a posterior glide. The final subface of the stance face is the pre-swing. This starts when the opposite heel contacts the ground and ends at toe off. The femoral head is still glided anteriorly to allow hip hyperextension. The tibial glides posteriorly and the patella inferiorly glides for knee flexion. At the ankle, the talocural joint goes to an anterior glide for plantar flexion. The swing face, where the foot is off the ground, is further subdivided into three subfaces. These are the initial swing that starts at toe off and ends when the swing leg is parallel to the stance leg. The femoral head here is glided posteriorly to allow hip flexion. The tibia glides posteriorly and the patella inferiorly glides to allow knee flexion while the talocrural joint glides anteriorly to allow ankle plantar flexion. Then we get to the mid swing where the thigh reaches its peak advancement. The femoral head here is glided posteriorly to allow hip flexion. The tibia glides posteriorly and patella glides inferiorly to allow knee flexion the talocrural joint is in a neutral position. The terminal swing occurs when the swing foot passes the stance leg and ends when the swing leg, specifically the heel, contacts the ground. Here, the femoral head is glided posteriorly to allow hip flexion. The knee and ankle joints are in neutral. If you want to know what hip, knee, and ankle muscles work during the gait cycle, then this video should give you that information. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please like, share, and comment. And for more therapy animations, please subscribe to Therani.